everyone. It's been a while. This is Rena. I'm the Slow Knitter from Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode number 39. Yes, I've been away. I was hoping that I would record more to, you know, set a resolution to record more, but it didn't work out this last month because we went down to the beach, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, welcome everyone. Um, welcome back to my subscribers. And if you're a new viewer, I hope you enjoy this uh, podcast and that you'll subscribe by hitting the button below. Uh, all my information on where to contact me on Ravelry, on Instagram, Facebook, um, and here on YouTube is all listed below um, the bar below this video. So this way, I don't have to you know put any kind of captions on. So let's see, where should we start? Let's start with what I'm wearing. I am wearing the Vila Wrap by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And this was part of the Helen Stewart Shawl Society 2 um, group of patterns. And I love a wrap, so I really wanted to do this. Um, this wrap took me a year and a half to do, really. I kept getting distracted. Well, we know the story of my distractions, but I kept getting distracted. And um, then when I would pick it up again, I would get sort of hung up on certain sections. Why? I, there's, don't ask. But the I'm going to title this particular section of when I talk about the Vila Wrap, I'm going to title it, Fran Saved My Ass. I think Fran knows exactly who she is and what I mean. Fran is one of the um, wonderful people down at the Destin Yarn Shop, which is the yarn shop near my um, summer home down at uh, uh, Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, which is in the north uh, west part of Florida. It's in the panhandle of Florida. Anyway, so and Fran's a very experienced knitter and I got sort of hung up on doing I was really at the end. I had finished this lace section at the end and I was getting ready to put the chevrons back in and I kept losing my count and losing the these um, great chevron lines that you see that run throughout this whole wrap. I kept losing them. I couldn't figure what I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. So um, I, I don't care, I, it's time, this thing has to be done, I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna finish it. I'm just gonna end it and if it's crooked, I don't care, it's my crooked, I don't care. Well, it, it sort of bugged me. It bugged me because I worked so hard on it. It was a beautiful piece, the fibers are beautiful. I'll tell you what I used. Um, and I, I thought, why am I settling for this? So I mentioned to Fran that I might wanna bring something in for her to look at and she said, sure, go ahead, do that. And I brought it in and we decided that I needed to rip it out, the section that I did incorrectly, rip it out. And uh, she would just get me back on the needles and she would just sit there as a comfort to me <laughs> while I got my rhythm back. God, it was, okay. So anyway, she got me back and I think I did like one, two, three sections and then I went home. The next morning I picked it up again. I am determined to finish this. And uh, I screwed it up again. Again. I, I don't know what was wrong with me. Yeah, I mean, you must have projects like that. Everybody's got projects like that. They're snake bit. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I remember watching her get it back on the needles. I'm going to go all the way back to the lace again and get back on the needles the way Fran got back on the needles. And I did. And then I finished it correctly. I love it. I love it. I shortened it. Um, it's a lot longer wrap, but you know, I've, I've said this before, sometimes they're a little too big for me. And then I feel it's kind of swallowed up by them. So I thought, you know, let me just, uh, figure out how I'm going to shorten. And I remember when I started, I contacted um, uh, the, the Ravelry group that was covering this particular um, project. And 
uh, one of um, Helen's uh, moderators, Tina Hinkman, told me to just make sure that whatever, however I shortened it, that I didn't disrupt the lace. That there, there are certain lace sections and you can see, just don't disrupt the lace section. So if you want to eliminate a lace section, go ahead, but just don't disrupt the, I think there's an eight row repeated lace or something like that. And I, and I didn't. I also saw on Ravelry, and this is why it's important to check uh, others that do this, a similar pattern that you're doing on Ravelry, uh, because they might give you some ideas. You might, you know, scroll through some of the um, project pages of other knitters that have knit what you've knit. Uh, and um, someone, uh, I forgot who, I, I wish I could give her credit by telling you her name, but if you see it, you'll, you'll know it. She actually interrupted the flow of the chevrons by adding the color lace that she used right in the middle of a section. And I thought that was so cool. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna do that. I was going to do it again, like towards the very end, but I thought, no, what makes this special is that it's one stripe. So I love it, I do love it. And I think it wears really well. Um, and you can wear it a number of ways. And uh, so I'm really happy with the way uh, that it came out. I'm really very happy with it. It, it came out exactly the way it wanted to come out. And um, in blocking it, I just really made sure that the lace opened up and that I blocked it wide. Cause when you're knitting it, it's like this thing. And this now it's like this wide. So all oh, the importance of blocking. So yeah, FO number one. See, that's what's good about maybe a little space between podcasts because I can actually show you work that I've finished since it takes me so long to finish anything. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. I think it came out exactly the way I wanted it to come out. It wears really well. It's the right length. I'll stand up a little bit for you. And, um, you know, let me step back without hurting myself. <laughs> I stumble a lot. But you can see the length is, it's not quite down to here. Oh, we can step back a little more. So, you know, it's it's just perfect for a night at dinner and, and I love the end of it. I, was, I made sure that I was really careful about making sure that the point stood out at the end when I blocked it. So yeah, I'm really thrilled with it. I hope you can hear me. If you can't, just put your volume up. I'm having trouble with microphones on this. I need to contact other people who use their iPad, iPhone for recording. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Anyway, mind your detail. Um, so turn your volume up if you can't hear me. I'm shouting at the phone. <laughs> so that's FO number one. I'm very, very happy with it. And I can see I will get a lot of use out of it. Now the fibers I used, I used um, this uh, lavender, uh, purpley kind of color is from Sheila of Bigfoot Fibers. I don't know that she dyes this color on a regular basis. She needs to because it just is beautiful. I, I think it was like a, uh, the name was like a impressionist kind of name, but it's beautiful. It's so when I saw Helen's project picture she had sort of black and white or gray and white and like a blue and i thought oh i love that i don't really have anything that goes with just if i want to wear a black outfit you know pop a color but not so much that anyway i had this um the gray is malabrigo finito in the plomo colorway and it's a sport white okay it's a sport white uh it also, if you can see, it changes color. So it gets dark and it gets light. So it looks like you're actually knitting with more than one color gray, but it is one color gray. So that was really, well, I'm a big Finito fan. So those of you who have been here before know that I love Malabrigo Finito. So the gray is the Malabrigo Finito. This is a colorway I cannot name, but it is a, a sock weight yarn from Sheila Pinkston of Bigfoot Fibers out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the white is, is uh, Madeline Tosh sock 
in the antler colorway. It's not really a white, it's sort of a, I think it leans more gray white. Uh, so the combination was like, okay, this looks good. I'll try that. And I love it, love it, love it, love it. So I'm very, very happy with it. I think my glasses are dirty. Oh, I can see, I'm getting a little glare. Um, yeah, I'm very, very, very happy with it for a lot of reasons. But thank you, Fran, for your moral support and for helping me. <laughs> so Fran saved my ass, that's the section's name. All right, let's move on to another finished object, which I'm very, very happy with as well. It's my second pair of socks this year. Yay, it's February. I don't know if I'll do 12, but I, I'm shooting eight to 10, hopefully. Um, these are, this is, I'm part of, I bought the sock club, Mina Phillips Sock Club, and the name of it just fell out of my head. Um, but these, this is the second sock in the series. And the name of the sock is the Gansey Sock. And you can see it has all sorts of patterns in it, a chevron, a, um, left-leaning diagonal, a right-leaning diagonal. Uh, so this, it's all this. I just had this yellow and I thought, oh, I'll use the yellow, which I forgot to use on the heel. Uh, anyway, this heel is a gorgeous stitch heel, which Mina Phillips does a lot of in her own sock patterning and sock making. And I really like it. It's cushy. It's comfy. This I did in Vullenvine's BFL um, I, uh, I'll look up which colorway it is. Venus fly, Venus fly trap BFL, um, which is sort of a little heavier than a normal sport weight. So it, it, I think it applies differently. I think BFL is a different fiber. Um, I did this on a size zero and it's, it fits well. Also the, the leg of the sock is longer than um, I normally do. Don't ask me why, it just is. But I like it, I like it a lot. It fits perfectly. Um, it's just a heavier sock than a normal uh, lighter weight sock. Um, I started the cuff on the yellow with this and you can't see, but this the ribbing continues down. And this I started with the green and ended with the yellow. Yeah, I was just playing around. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun knitting it because there was a lot of variety in the stitches. And for the first time, I went all the way around the calf. I usually don't. I usually just to the front and then stop knitting in the back. This time I went all the way around. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to do these socks. I really, really enjoyed it. I look forward to it. I do my socks two at a time on two separate needles. And this is a size zero and I've been experimenting with size zero socks just to see if it works. I, I liked it, yeah. So that's number two. I'm so happy. I've got number three cast on. I'll show you that when I talk a little bit about my whips, which I guess we can segue into the whips. Let me invite my guest today, Ethel. Whoops. <laughs> Ethel, my model. Don't fall, Ethel. Let me show you Ethel. Ethel is uh, modeling my uh, turtle dove sweater. And, uh, and I know a lot of people have been doing turtle dove this year particularly. It's a free pattern on a spouse tree, from a spouse tree co. I will put the link below. I'll put links to all these patterns below. Um, she is uh, ready for the sleeves, obviously. You see my sleeves are on hold. And um, I'll lift her up. She has no back ribbing yet. So the front ribbing is done. Um, it uses a stitch I absolutely hate. I hate purling through the back loop. Just telling you. Hey, if you have a stitch you hate, I'm collecting them. Maybe my next podcast is which stitches everybody hates. Put below which stitch is your least favorite stitch. I'm collecting them. I'm gonna let everybody know. So for me, Pearl Through the Back Loop is my least favorite stitch. Well, it's one of them. I don't, there are probably more, but it's one of them. Pearl Through the Back Loop. I'm a continental knitter. 
I figured it out. I figured out how to do it efficiently. It's working out so far. It worked out. Um, I'm gonna lift Ethel up. You can see the ribbing on the bottom. I mean, it's beautiful when you have a twisted rib like that. It's really beautiful. Now, um, this was interesting. Uh, I'll have Ethel, you can stay. Ethel was my maternal grandmother's name. <laughs> so she's Ethel. Uh, this pattern called for a nine for the um, turtleneck and a 10 and three quarters or 10 and a half for the body. This uses Wolf Folk Luft, and I use I used Wolf Folk Luft for this, which is a lovely, lovely yarn. It's beautiful. I will say that I am not typically, I'm usually a fingering weight, maybe a six or seven needle size. You are a six or seven needle size knitter. I am not a nine, 10, 11, 13 knitter. Um, it hurts my hands a lot. So I avoid patterns that typically have bigger needles and, and heavier weight yarn. However, because Wolf Folk Luft is so light and airy, it didn't feel, it doesn't feel bulky. Um, uh, I swatched on a size nine and I made gauge on a size nine because I'm a pretty loose knitter. So I made gauge on a size nine. This You've seen a lot of people wear it. A lot of people have it very tunicky and very um, boxy looking. This is not boxy looking on me. It's a little bit, it's got a little bit of room uh, and it comes up to about, well, comes up and I tried it on. It hasn't been blocked. I tried it on last night and it probably comes up right, comes right above, right below my belly button now even longer. Um, and that's where I wanted it. Uh, I didn't want it to be tunic length because after all these years, I figured out the tunic length, depending on the cut, can make me look bigger than I am. Finally figured it out. After years of wearing nothing but tunic length clothing, I know sometimes it takes you a long time to figure this out. Anyway, the back has an, a, an extra inch or two on so it's a split hem and it's a little bit longer back so i'm a little concerned that this um side area you'll be able to see but maybe not um i might have to seam it seam it up to a certain point and then let it split hem but uh, my wednesday gals will help me figure that out anyway I'm very happy with it uh Aspostris co it's a free pattern on Ravelry. The name of it is Turtle Dove. A lot of people are doing it in different kinds of yarn. One of my friends down at Destin Yarn Shop did it in a, I think a cotton blend. It looked really lovely. So people are doing different things with the neck. I did the turtleneck and it's a snug turtleneck, which I like. I didn't want it to be too droopy and it's and it's snug. So, and, and, and that's great for me. It's great for me. So anyway, that's Turtle Dove. That's one of my whips and uh, one that I will be spending a lot of time just to finish it and, um, you know, sleeve island. And I'm not going to do the sleeves full length. I'm probably going to do the sleeves in the ribbing, like up to like this much ribbing and this much sleeve. So it's really five inches on the sleeve, maybe. And then two inches on the ribbing because I don't want it to be full length. I like my sweaters three quarters length. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I have a lot of people that will help me out <laughs> in measuring and trying on. And um, so I'm very lucky. So I have a great crew that will help me. Anyway, I'm really happy with it. I've wanted to do the pattern since I first saw it. I know that it was a very popular pattern at Vogue Knitting Live. Um, and I think it's one of these sort of uh, patterns that you'll see for years to come because it's so simple. It's so classic that you can make this and wear this for a long time. I'm turning the camera back to me. I'm eliminating mm -hmm. Ethel now. I'm moving her back. Ethel, Ethel, step aside. Don't block my, don't crowd my space. Okay, Ethel's gone now. Uh, anyway, so yeah. 
That's a good one. Um, all right, I want to bring you up to date on my shawl. By the way, my shawl knit along in my Ravelry group, the Slow Knitter group, is going very well. And I awarded my first gift to Charlotte, Charcat one, I think, on Ravelry, Charlotte, um, from California. She won the first um, two skein giveaway. And it's from Arkansas Yarn Company, and she is going to love it. So my next giveaway will be sometime next month, towards the end of next month. And I've got a couple of um, dyers that have sent their yarns in, so I'll be gifting one of those. But you should see, go to my podcast group just to see the beautiful shawls that are being done there. Like, I can't tell you how many I've added to my favorites. <laughs> I think every one. And um, one of my... Uh, one of the members of that group of that knit along also gifted me a beautiful pattern. So thank you very much for that. And uh, that's also going in my queue. My queue of shawls is so long. I don't even, I, I can't even, I can't even to quote someone we all know. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I'm really, really happy with how that's going. Some beautiful, beautiful work is being done in that, in that, um, in that knit along. So yeah, I'm happy. Also my sock and hat knit along are going great. So I'm very happy with you, my knit along people. Thank you for joining in. If you still want to join in, uh, the shawl thing is every two and a half months or so, I give away two skeins of fingering weight yarn uh, donated by uh, Dyer. And if you want to see who the dyers are, go to that Ravelry um, group and you'll see there's some pretty impressive dyers in there. All right, let me show you, let me bring you up to date on where I am on some things, and then we'll, I'll share some acquisitions with you. Now, even though I am the leader of the shawl knit along, doesn't mean that I have a shawl that's done. Well, this didn't qualify because it was like January 1st start, and I, this was 18 months. Why, you say? I don't know. I'm trying to analyze this myself. But anyway, um, I'm doing the uh, Eiffel Gold shawl by Melanie Berg. I'm using um, two colors of Primrose Yarn Company Sport Weight. Uh, and uh, since I showed it to you last, I've uh, come um, a longer way. So this is a mosaic shawl. It's my little progress keeper to tell me I'm on the right side. And I already know I'm on the right side, but I like it. Um, yeah, I've made some progress on this. I've made some good progress on it. I'm now about to go into um, another blue section forever. It's going to take forever, but I love it. I'm really, really happy with it. I love Melanie's um, directions. I love mosaic knitting. So it's going very well. It's, and I picked um, two colors. The blue is called Old Tailored Suit by Primrose Yarn, it's a sport weight yarn, and the pink is a, um, it's called Antiqued, and it is also sport weight. So they really go well together, and I'm super, this is, a, it, it will now go into a potato chippy mode, because I'm not doing the mosaic, I have to concentrate on. But the, um, the blue knit, I don't, so, I don't knit during television, really because my TV chair isn't, I end up, are hurting a lot because of the way I'm sitting. So um, I, I knit mostly during the day at the kitchen table or here in the knit cape. All right, so that is shawl number one. Shawl number two, I'm doing a knit along with um, Westside Market here, uh, Heart and Spirit, Atlanta. It's located in the Westside Market, um, not far from me. And uh, we are doing Hohe's Okay, I get this. I've got this wrong too many times. The name. I, I keep wanting to say, uh, yeah. It's a Hohe shawl. And it's called Slow Curves. And Magley, who runs Heart and Spirit Atlanta, for those of you who remember, modified the pattern for me because it was going to end up being over 500 stitches. And that's too much. Uh, plus, it'll be too big, la la. So, she modified it for me, and I am working it out and loving it. I am using Long Dog Yarns, and um, I just put in this sort of purplish color. 
So it's really working out well. I'm in love with it. I'm gonna get back to this now that I finished the Vila wrap. Um, I did take this to the beach because when we went to the beach, most of February, I really was determined to finish this. I didn't want, I, I brought Turtle Dove with me, but I didn't bring enough yarn. So I got as far as I could go with that. And the socks, and that's, I didn't bring anything else. But this, I'm now getting back to this. It's beautiful. I love it. I love the knit. Uh, and the fact that Magley's modifications were, are so good uh, and so clear that um, I'm excited about getting back to it. So long dog yarns, really, really beautiful yarns using, um, there's lots of short rows and turning it. And I love that because it's not a boring knit. I will say that it's not potato chippy. I mean, their sections are, but no, not really. And, uh, it's crescent shape. A lot of um, hubby shawls are crescent shape. So this is what it will look like once it's done. Uh, and this pinky purpley section will go on and there's a fourth color, which I didn't think I was gonna do, but I am gonna do the fourth color. But I think it's gonna be a perfect size for me. So I'm excited about this one. I'm really, I'm excited to get back to it because I've been slightly distracted. We'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, so she modified it and I've printed it out and perfect. perfect. All right, that's whip number three. Not a monogamous knitter. If I were, the turtle dust setter would be done. But I'm just too curious. I keep wanting to try new things like I just cast on. All right, so I finished that sock. So I vowed that this year, that most of the time I would have a sock on the needles, that I would have a sock on the needles a lot. I have been wanting to cast this on since the pattern came out, but you know, you know how it is. We get very excited when patterns come out. We want to cast things on right away. And uh, so instead I just collect the yarns that I know I'm going to use for it. So I'm just going to bend over. I was fixated with sock blanks for a while, 18 months ago, last year. I still love them. Um, and I decided that Maria from Ninja T Chickens uh, dyes sock blanks using botanicals. I mean, she doesn't use acid dyes. Most of what she uses is from her garden whether she dyes the actual wool from her garden to how she structures the, what elements of the sock blank. She has this beautiful sock blank um, that I purchased last year, but you can see the leaves on it. It's beautiful. Then, uh, let's see, she has here what it's dyed with. Printed with oak leaf, hydrangea, butterfly pea, and flower. This is her. This is the description of the, of the actual. It's called Weld. I love it. And I've, I've been talking to a friend of mine who said, you know, it's just weird as a scarf. It's so beautiful. But I've really wanted to knit with it for a while. And um, then a very good, very good close friend of Maria's. Many of us know her here as Hey Brown Berry Mars. Um, actually came out with a pattern, a sock pattern. I think it's her first sock pattern that she came out with. It's fabulous. Pebbles and Pathways Socks by Mars. And I thought, okay, those two are like besties. They're like really close friends. Why don't I make this out of this? Yeah. I mentioned it to Maria, and Maria was like, oh, that sounds so good. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's my Pebbles and Pathway BFF friends sock. It's toe up. Um, it's got a little cable on each side. You can see it here. Um, I haven't done toe up socks in a while. I was anxious to start it. So I also, since I do my socks two at a time, 
I wound up um, part of the sock blank uh, into a into a cake, and uh, did my first tote today. So I'm off and running on the Pebbles Pathway socks. It's got an afterthought heel, which I love to do. I haven't done it in a while again. I'm excited. So one toe on. This is what the sock blank looks wound up. Uh, I'm very excited about doing it. So it's my Pebbles and Pathway BFF sock from Maria. The fiber is from Maria of Ninja Chickens and the pattern is from Mars of Hey Brown Berry. So girls, I'm doing it. I told Maria I was doing it and I am doing it. Exciting. Okay. Lots of other things, but I won't bore you. I do want to tell you that uh, a couple of good friends of mine, part of my crew, went to Vogue Knitting Live and they had a blast. And I asked them, oops, sorry, going off camera. Um, I asked them to pick me up um, something from Barnyard Knits. And uh, I wanted a pack of minis because who doesn't love Kim's yarns and I love her minis, and I think we gave away a set of her minis when we did a giveaway recently. So I wanted another set. So, uh, well, I was I was somewhere, and one of my friends kept texting me, "This do you like this one, or this one, or this one? So Kim helped her pick out um, a bunch of minis for me. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I love it. And I want to make something gradient with this. I do have another skein of barnyard that I could use with this that would complement this to make something really lovely. So I'm happy and thank you for picking this up for me and thank you Kim for helping pick it out. But that's my Vogue knitting life and and uh, and we got a pin. So I'm really happy with that. I'm really, really happy with that. Um, I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about the fact that I tend to get distracted. That was the story all of last year. I am working really, really hard this year not to get too distracted. I, it may not work, but I already got distracted. And this is what I've done to myself. I'm not punishing myself. I'm just acknowledging that I got distracted and I'm putting it to the side. But I thought I would show, show you what I got distracted with and what I did to identify the problem so that I'm acknowledging it. Notice that I have on the um, thing, so I can tell, it says distraction number one, 2019. Distraction number one. I'm hoping to keep it under five. I'm not kidding myself. I know I'm going to get distracted again, but I thought I would share with you what I got distracted with. All right, so... Um, I had this skein left over from this project and it's about 70 grams. I mean, it's not little, it's enough to do something with. Everyone I know and everybody I watch has been knitting with mohair and they love mohair. And I thought I've never knit with mohair. Teresa, my friend has gifted me a beautiful mohair cowl, which I wear periodically and love it. Uh, it's all mohair. So Carol at the Destin Yarn Shop had this great mohair, which um, I then, I said, do you have any mohair? I want to try mohair. So I'm holding these two together. Then evil Carol, no, love her, found this Goosey Fibers skein. She sells Goosey Fibers down there. Who doesn't love Goosey Fibers? I love Goosey Fibers. Her colors are wonderful. So she said, what about this? I said, I'm afraid I'm gonna run out of these two. She said, well, what about this? I said, look at that combination, come on. Then, make it worse, Barbara Benson, who teaches um, classes and is a self-taught knitwear designer. Uh, she's on um, YouTube as Watch Barbara Knit and I think she's on Instagram as Tumped Duck. I have no idea where that's from. But she had a basic crescent shawl recipe 
I thought, oh, I'll just give it a try. And then, you know, things got away. I tried these two together, which yielded this beautiful fabric. And then the goosey fibers came into the picture. I mean, it's okay. I kind of like it, kinda. But I have so many other things that are like my own personal deadlines that I have to meet that this has really got to go away now. It's got to go in the closet. But I really like the mohair combination. Like, look at this fiber without mohair. Look at with mohair. I don't like holding two yarns together, which my friend Sarah English taught me how to do. Um, and I think the goosey fiber is not. I think what's going to happen is as this grows, when I get back to it one day, I think I'm going to have to end up going more towards the goosey because I'll run out of the uh, Bigfoot fibers, the purple on the Bigfoot foot fibers thing. I have backwards. Um, and it's a great recipe. Uh, check her YouTube channel out. She has a great crescent shawl, basic crescent shawl recipe. So I'm doing six repeats of the um, light lavender with the mohair held together and three repeats of the goosey and then six repeats. And we'll see how long it takes me, how far it takes me, whenever I get back to this. But I wanted to tell you about my first distraction of 2019, identified and put away, put back on the shelf. And I'll get back to it. I have a recipe, I know what to do. There's no knit along, there's no rush. Just felt like doing something different with that. And distraction number one, goes back on the shelf, in the closet. Oh, I forgot my goosey. Um, yeah, her fiber is wonderful to work with. It's an MCN. Um, it's pretty, pretty wonderful. It's uh, so I highly recommend uh, her yarns. Um, I. I'm dying to do another Caitlin Hunter project. You know, the only Caitlin Hunter project I've done from Boylan Knits is uh, the Glacier Park cowl, which I love. I wear all the time. Uh, but, well, not but. I purchased uh, Quince & Co's DK to do her Tecumseh sweater. Uh, I love the way Christina of Chelsea Pearls, if you know that podcast, I love the way Christina modified hers, shorter length, shorter sleeves. Um, it looks almost like a sleeved poncho. I love that. And so I'm going to probably, um, she's good Ravelry notes. So I'm looking at her Ravelry, Ravelry notes and sort of, um, emulating what she did. But let me show you the yarns I'm using, but one drop, so I'll be right back. Things keep dropping. But if you've watched this podcast before, I'm constantly dropping things. Okay. All right. There I go. Uh, I'm using Quince & Co's DK, which is called Phoebe. And the base of the sweater is going to be this sort of light gray. It's called Jupiter. And if you know the pattern, I dropped the pattern just now. I see something over there that dropped and I have no idea what it is. This is a pattern, just to remind you, it's a very popular pattern. Um, Tecumseh, color work. And the way Christina modified it was she shortened the sleeves and shortened the body, which would be her per perfect for me because if I did the actual size, it, it would swallow me up. So I don't want that, but I want it to be. So this is the main color and there's two other colors in the pattern. And um, I've picked these. I actually saw somebody, I forgot who it was, maybe it was Suburban Stitcher, I don't remember who it was, who also did it in Quinn's and I thought that's what I wanna do. 
And so this will be the main color and then this will be colors with it. Yeah, so that's um, the DK. Then Caitlin came out with a new pattern called the Sturgill sweater. And I thought, oh, I, oh, I'm, I want to do that. So I had a little bit of an impulse, like I ran and I just, and Primrose Yarn, who really does a great job with dyeing, had a whole kit for the sweater. I'm getting it. It's right here. I don't know what takes me so long to get it. Uh, this is the pattern. It came with a cowl, but I, I, I've done it. No, this is not the pattern. Anyway. Uh, yeah, no, that's not the pattern. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, but Primrose, yeah, but the base of the sweater is this beautiful gray called graphite. It's also in a DK. Look at that. It's beautiful. And then it comes with three three color work so the gray would be the main color and then yeah this would be i'll put the link to the pattern below um this probably won't get done this year i already have like this year lined up for sweaters after i finish um turtle dub i'm going to finish up a ca uh, poncho that I'll do that will be ready for next summer, next winter, or, or I'll put it off until July, and then I don't know what I'll do, but it's it's like uh, this much done, turtleneck down to like this, and the, it's mosaic, and that's all done, and now it's just a question of just doing the rest. So I don't know if I'm gonna do that, and last night I had a thought that we're going away on vacation in May, and I haven't knit anything for that trip. Don't you think I should, like a, Lightweight sweater? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe just lots of shawls. I do have a shawl that I want to finish for that trip, which is a Helen Stewart, which is a Helen Stewart shawl. I want to finish that. Uh, and it's always almost done. So, <sighs> a lot of stuff. But I love it. I love casting on new things, which is why I get so distracted, which is why I can't, I have to, I have to call myself out and say, you are distracted. Distraction number one, put it away. If you want to go back to it, it since it's a potato chitty, chippy knit, the number one distraction, I might just bring it on a trip because it's uh, easy peasy. So um, sweaters take me a long time and some things I have to concentrate on. I can't like sit, well, I don't sit in front of TV and knit. I, I always, usually maybe I'll have an audio book playing or I sit really quiet um, and knit. And then hours just go off. Oh, whatever. Anyway. Um, I do have more, but um, I think that will be it for today. I just wanted to check in and let you know that I'm still here. Um, I might periodically come on, check in on my stories on Instagram. I'll probably be posting more often on there because uh, sometimes sitting down other podcasters, no, sitting down to do a podcast takes a little work. It's a lot of work, um, but they're so fun. And I love everybody that tunes in and watches me. Thank you. Uh, anyway, that's the story. So I'm done um, for today. There's no news. We're just, um, I don't, do I have any news? Well, Bob's birthday's coming up in a few weeks. One of my girlfriends I knit with her birthday's coming up in a couple weeks. Wink, wink. So we have some birthdays. I'm celebrating a birthday with my former business partner tomorrow. We're going to a favorite restaurant. I also, because of my big trip in May, I'd like to shed an extra couple of pounds just to make room for being able to eat vacation foods. We'll see, doesn't matter. I'm happy. Um, okay, I think that's it. I'm sure there's more that I have forgotten, but I don't wanna overwhelm you. Anyway. Don't forget to put below what your least favorite knit stitch is. It could be purling. It could be like me, purl through the back loop. It could be cabling. It could be, I don't know, anything. Just put it below. I'd be curious to see. 
And then who knows? You know, I may call one of you out. No. <laughs> Ooh. Promo is here on so beautiful. Um, okay, everyone. I think that's it. I'm sure I forgot something, but um, for now, that should do it. Uh, anyway, thanks for chopping by. Thanks for stopping by, and thanks for um, listening to my rants and raves and my news about my work. And uh, if you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button below. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right. See you in a few weeks. Bye.